Welcome to Downshift, everyone. My name is Paulo. And my name is Matt, and we are here with the 2024 Toyota Corolla Circuit Edition. This is the much sought after Circuit Edition, and we've spent time in this. We've been behind the wheel of a Golf R, the Civic Type R, and today we're going to cover just how this thing stacks up with the best in the rest. <laughs> First thing we're going to talk about is the interior build and kind of quality overall. And I know this is a hot hatch and no one is expecting a Rolls Royce interior, but as far as it compares to something like the Type R and even the Golf R, this is, and maybe even the, the Hyundai N-Twins, this might seem just a little bit more on the bargain side of things. You've got some kind of foam squishy dash materials, but you've got some gloss black plastics. You do have some fun accents. I mean, you've got forged carbon shifter uh, with a little bit of blue accenting. This is courtesy of the blue flare paint. And the seats themselves are nice. You get kind of like a suede with the blue accenting. GR embossed in your headrest. The seats actually remind me a lot of the Supra, but just generally speaking from the interior, the design and the materials, it does remind you maybe even a little bit more than the others that this is a Corolla that's been ritzed up rather than a very nice high-end performance car that's maybe even a little washed down for the base model. So it's fine. It's just not quite as nice as some of the others in the segment. And then there's the trunk. Of course, the benefit of having a hot hatch is the practicality of adding some cargo space to your performance. And here, again, with the Golf R, with the Civic Type R, you're getting more trunk space. And the reason being here is, you see this floor seems really, really high. And it is because they've moved the battery back here and it's covered and surrounded by this foam. It does say GR, so I guess that's nice. You've got little pockets to put stuff here, but you're not gonna have that in the Civic Type R, which is why the Civic has such a big hatch. You do have some little cubbies over here and you can drop the rear seats. And if you're so interested, I was able to fit an entire performance exhaust for a BMW M340 in the trunk here. So it's not like it's impractical, it's just you are going to get more trunk space in a Golf R and definitely in a Civic Type R. And then this is a bit of a smaller one, but it is annoying. And it's the fact that you don't have a center armrest here. And I know this is a performance car and you see a lot of these weight saving techniques and Toyota Lexus is actually, they're, they're pretty big on this. You remember Paulo when we had our RCF track edition and they had removed the cooled seats from the front seats, but they had left the entire uninhabitable rear seats in the car to save weight. So again, kind of making compromises to the daily livability, removing a center console here, no cup holders, no vents, no you know storage or anything like that in the name of saving weight. I'm just not sure that it's worth it. And the same thing, moving the battery from the front to the back for that little tiny gain in weight distribution, but now you have a lot less trunk space. It makes me wonder if these compromises are really worth it for the performance, because after all, it is a hatchback. What do you think though? Worth it or no? I wasn't expecting that. Maybe it's maybe it's to the audience for the comments. Who knows? <laughs> That's a good one, actually. Uh, no, but my two cents actually is, I don't think it's worth it. And the fourth and final thing that I've kind of struggled with is, this thing just kind of refuses to get loose. Come down into this left hand or right hander. Power on. It's just a little bit of push. I mean, this is great for things like chassis discipline on track if you want to set a nice blistering lap time, but the whole thing about this GR Corolla is that it brings the GR4, the all-wheel drive, and you can set that up to 60% to the front, but also up to 70% to the rear. And to me, when I turn traction off, and Toyota recognizes that as expert mode, which is funny, I kind of want it to step out a little bit. Now, of course, on loose surface, you will be able to do so, but, you know, the, the other vehicle in this segment that brings all-wheel drive is the Golf R and VW even brings you a drift mode. So the fact that I can't get this thing to step out really no matter how hard I try, it's just a little bit of a bummer. And then there's the fuel economy aspect and I know this is a performance hot hatch and maybe this isn't the top of your list on things you care about, but the fact is this is a 1.6 liter three-cylinder engine. The engine in my BMW M340 is literally double the size and I get like 33 to 40 percent better fuel economy. I drove this thing on a 100 mile commuting trip on highway, all highway, and I got like 20 to 21 mpg and paulo has been getting worse than that. So I'm just a little unimpressed and obviously with a smaller engine you're having to work it harder to get the performance and get the speed but even just coasting or I guess going down the highway at 75-80 miles an hour we're in high up into the 3000 rpms and it's just sucking down fuel. 
But onto the positives, we're gonna start with the engine because it is just kind of unique and special. It's the same 1.6 liter turbocharged three cylinder that we originally saw in the GR Yaris overseas. We never got it here in the States, but now we get it here in the GR Corolla. With boost and everything, it's making 300 horsepower and 275 pound-feet of torque. That is gonna be a little bit less than you get in the Civic Type R, as well as the Golf R, but it's still pretty good. It's fast, it's fun, and it makes a lot of fun turbo noises, which I really like. But the interesting thing about this engine is it kind of makes you work for it. You want to make power up in the higher end of the rev band. It's not just point and squirt. It is going to make you work for it, row the gears, and get the most out of the engine. But Paulo, did you, what did you think about the engine? Yeah, I think the first thing I noticed right away was just how high into the rev band you really needed to go to get to try and extract some of the power out of it. But a lot of fun. It likes to be revved out. And then there's the GR4 system, and all-wheel drive here is standard. Down into the left-hander, grip, power. It's great. Love to see it here. Now, this all-wheel drive system is actually pretty sophisticated. It allows you to send more or less power to the front in normal mode. It's going to send 60% of the power to the front, 40 to the back. In track mode, it's going to send equal 50-50, almost like a Subaru symmetrical all-wheel drive system. And then, if you want to go into, I forget what they call it, rear mode, whatever, uh, it'll send 30% to the front and 70% to the rear. So it's always kind of trying to figure out where it's supposed to send max power to maximize the chassis balance and the dynamics of the car. Oh, so now it's 5,000. <laughs> this is like how the sheets get oh, wait, more expensive say... every time. <laughs> did, I, did I say five? I meant you four. You said four. I meant four. <laughs> Originally, you said four. I meant four. Oh no. Dude, we're never getting a Toyota again. What, you think it's going to smell like this on Monday? It clearly won't. No, but like... Someone's gonna pick it up and be like, why is the clutch so shitty and why is it slipping? And then we're gonna talk transmission, of course, and you only get one transmission option like you would in the Type R, and it's the six speed, three pedal transmission that we get here. Decent throws, I have missed a couple shifts, so it was weird going up into third, I did miss, but I do like the character that you get here. Blue here, uh, per part of the blue flare paint. You've got forged carbon looking stuff at the top here, and then you've got a pretty decent sized pedal box, at least for me with size 12 feet. You've also got the IMT button here. Now, most cars that give you rev matching, IMT stands for rev matching, by the way, basically. Most cars that have rev match, you can turn it on and then it'll stay on, but this will default to off because it wants you to be a better driver. So you have to click this little button on the left of the steering wheel if you want to engage rev matching for your downshifts, which I like actually pretty well. But Paulo, what did you think about this transmission? Yeah, I really liked it as well. I feel like it's really easy to get used to. It kind of reminds me of the Miata. Um, I didn't really have any difficulties with any of the throws or anything like that, but I think it's a really good, and I think the rev matching here is also really, really good as well. It's hard not to like a manual transmission in 2024. And then just generally, it's a lot of fun behind the wheel. It's really, really fun, and it starts with the engine. It's just some character to it. It's a 1.6 liter turbocharged three cylinder, not a four cylinder, a three cylinder. And I think that's just kind of fun. You get it from the rally homologated GR Yaris and it puts it, put it in here. You got all wheel drive standard. You're looking at 300 horsepower and 275 pound feet of torque. A little bit less than the Civic Type R, but this thing is a lot of fun still. You've got pretty good low end torque. You crack your window a little bit. You hear loads of turbo noises, spool, blow off the whole thing. The powertrain does want you to chase revs. It does want you to unlock the max horsepower because that's up higher in the rev range. So it wants you to keep revs a little bit higher to get that maximum performance. Down into the right hander, power. There it is, upper half of the rev band, bliss. Then you've got the circuit edition here, which brings you LSDs on the front and rear. Core examples aren't gonna give you that as standard. I believe you can option them in uh, after the fact, but the handling is pretty good. There's a bit of push uh, around corner entry and mid corner when you're really at the limit, but if you're just driving around day to day on some side streets, you're not really gonna notice it. And it's just a handful of fun. I like it. And then one of my favorite parts about this car I know it drives well and it's fast and it's fun, but I love the way that this thing looks, especially, and I've said it 17 times this video already, but the blue flare paint is so good. Indirect sunlight, you get so much metal flake, the tone is great, and the circuit edition really complements it. You do get the forged carbon roof, you do have your hood scoops here on your circuit edition, you won't get that on the core, but then down here, it is the aggressive front fascia. Of course, LED headlights, LED fogs, big GR grill up here, and you can even see 
GR4 for your all-wheel drive system painted on the radiator, which is pretty cool. Around the side, let's just see if we can get a nice shot of this paint real quick because it is just something to see. So much metal flake, a lot of sparkle. But then we come back out, we've got new revised lighter wheels for your circuit edition. We've also got red GR brakes, Pilot Sport 4 tires, loads and loads of grip. I might like a little bit less grip on the back to get a little bit more rotation on power, but if you want a great handler, this is set up really well. Flared fenders up front with a gill, GR, and then the blue flare is also going to get you these black decals on your skirt here. You've also got GR4 embossed down here and black accents for your windows, but right here reminds me of a boat a little bit, the way that it kind of comes off a little bit and then aggressive chine right back here. Really aggressive flared rear hip that you really like to see. I do like to see that you still get a rear windshield wiper like you don't get in the Marizo. This is a bit annoying that the trunk release is down here. I never like that, but whatever. And then down here, really aggressive diffuser with triple exhaust, one on the left, the right, and the center. So no matter where you get rear-ended, you're gonna have to replace the exhaust. What do you think about the look? As you catch a break, as, a, as you catch a breath. Um, I think it looks really good. We were just talking how it gives Focus RS vibes, especially in this uh, color that we have here. Yes. Um, but I really like it. I think for a hot hatch, it, it fits apart really well. We were actually saying, like, wh what do you think looks better, this or a Fo Focus RS? Understanding that they don't make those anymore. I, I would say this. I really like the RS. Leave it down in the comments what you like. Yeah, I, lo I love it. It looks... I mean, this is the spec. If you're going to get one, this is it. Yeah. This For is me, the anyway. It this is, is it. isn't it. Then we're going to take a look at the rear seats. Again, mixing performance with practicality. I'm 6'1", sitting behind myself. Got about an inch or two of knee room in front of me. I am going to hit my nub. I take my hat off, and I'm going to be fine. It's nice. You know, it's, it's perfectly practical. I think it's nice to have some of the accenting come from the front seat as well. With the blue and the Alcantara, you do get multiple. Uh, map pockets, but again, not having any sort of like vent back here. You do have some charging for a 12 volt as well as a USB-C. And you do have multiple cup holders, not just two in the center. Again, the Civic Type R is only gonna give you two seats in the back and no center console, but you also have useless cup holders in the door as well. So just some added practicality and usability that you're not gonna get in the Type R. Okay, not on a track though. Yes? No, dude, on the little go-kart track, the Cross X, this thing would are you serious, bruv, actually? Bro, you playing. This would destroy your M340 on that little thing. You are bike. playing, bro. I actually, you're not I serious. can't tell if you're serious. You're not serious. <laughs> That's serious. You're not on, okay. serious. On, obviously, on Road America, you would dust it. No, no, but no. on the little cross-sex track. I think, I think on the cart track, I'm still taking it. Dude, there is no way. You can the go The thing is, we'll so never fat. know because snowed this week and we didn't get to put a track down or a time down you can go so fast in a corner in this thing way faster than your car who who was in here with that who was in here dumping clutches <laughs> not i <laughs> i gotta stay high oh oh and then as far as the technology goes in here you don't get everything but you get pretty much everything that you could want or need at something reasonably within this price bracket you don't have head-up display that's really kind of the only thing that i might ding it on but it's pretty consistent throughout the segment to not have that, but you do have a fully digital instrument cluster. It changes these three panels depending on three different customizable views that you can do. And then it also changes to have a kind of graduating tachometer like you'd see in a Type R or you know pretty much any performance car when you throw it into sport mode. But then zooming back, I wanna talk about this because this is really impressive. You got Toyota Safety Sense here. And remember in the M2, when we didn't have adaptive cruise and we had basically nothing for the manual transmission. We have manual transmission here. We've got adaptive cruise. We've got active lane keep, lane tracing, whatever. And it worked brilliantly, really well, right? Yeah. No, I was it, really, really impressed. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say it, it works really well. And it's interesting that the M2 did not have those features. Yeah, I mean, this is a Toyota and it's bringing you a really nice and robust system. But then here, you've got an eight inch screen. It's an inch smaller than your Civic Type R. But as far as the Apple CarPlay goes, it's wireless, it connects more consistently, at least in my experience. I didn't have a, a single time this week that it didn't connect for me right away. So this works really well. Uh, you go for your circuit grades, which is what we have here. You're gonna get native navigation. I don't really care. I'm gonna use CarPlay, uh, but you do have dual Bluetooth connection. You've got reverse camera, oh, okay. no 360, obviously, but it's fine. Uh, just generally speaking, I've got everything here that I want. I've got wireless charger, that kind of works. I've got wireless Apple CarPlay, digital cluster, I'm good. But I think we can 
speed it up a bit. Woo! It smells good. It smells really good in here. Love the smell of clutch in the morning. That is a grown man smell. <laughs> Uh, here That's we fun. are. Yeah, no, it's three cylinders of fury, 100 horsepower per cylinder. It's really impressive. It's fun. Yeah, it's a fun car. You know, and like I know that I said some mixed things throughout this video, but like at the end of the day, it's fun. It right. is a fun car. I have fun looking at it. I have fun driving it. It makes sense. It's got all-wheel drive practicality. A big trunk, dish. You know, rear seat. And it's, it's hard not to love. It's awesome that Toyota is making something like this in 2024 as well. Yeah, with the stick. Yes. So why don't we then start with your favorite things? Yeah. So yeah, one of the first things that I really like is the all-wheel drive system. You kind of just mentioned it, but um, the ability to do some of the ratios that you have with where you're sending the power, I think is really good. And the handling that you get uh, from this all-wheel drive system is, is really good. I think it leaves me really confident compared to some of the um, other competitors out there. So I really enjoyed that. What yeah, we, I mean, if, if you want grip, this is it. Yeah. With, with the Pilot Sport 4s and the GR system, the GR4 system. I feel like you would like, say it's almost it's almost too There's too, There's too much, too much grip, grip. For, yeah. for me personally. Because you like when it gets I a like, little I like a looser back end a little bit, so something like a Golf R with a drift mode mm -hmm. is, speaks to me a little bit more, but it is cool. I mean, it's the fact that you can kind of send a little bit of that, and if you're really kind of playing at the limit, you can start to feel a little bit of push um, from the rear end on, on power, but it's, it's just nice to have that capability and that practicality, especially in a colder climate like this. You can right. drive this year round and not worry about it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, my second favorite thing is just some of the features that you get um, that I wasn't really expecting until you know I kind of did some of the research, but you have really good lane keep assist, really good adaptive cruise, like some features that you wouldn't really expect here. You have heated seats, you have a heated steering wheel, like just some of the daily yeah. creature comforts that wireless are nice to see here. Yeah, works. wireless car play. Physical climate controls, right? Unlike the <laughs> terrible VW system, it is easy to daily this thing. Yeah, hundred um, percent. And then the third thing I would say is honestly, and it sounds childish, but like the the noises and sounds that you get, not only from the exhaust, which I think hey, there for, we go, Type R for this size engine sounds actually pretty good. See, now you say childish, but that's kind of the whole point of this segment, at least to me in my eyes. Like, right. this is, no, is maybe not like childish, childish, like juvenile, but like, it's supposed to be like, have some levity, have some yeah. like joy and some of that innocent fun. And yeah, the turbo, the spool, the, spool the flutter, right the blow off, like, it's just fun. It Crack is. the window a little bit, you can really hear it. And for me, I don't really care about, you know, zero to 60 as much. I don't care about quarter mile. I like the experience and sound is such a big part of that. So yeah. this is a lot of fun. Do you have any other uh, favorites that I did I mention? I'm gonna say the paint again because I can't oh, yeah. say enough good things about this paint. But it just, is yeah, really the way good. it looks is awesome. Yeah, totally agree. So what do you not like? Um, yeah, so there are a few things. I think one thing to just be aware of with this, uh, and we didn't really talk about it too much, but um, if you are gonna go to the track often and that's kind of your main purpose of getting this thing i would do a bit more research there's there's other channels out there that uh, do a lot of track days with these cars and they have a tendency to overheat now obviously there are some remedies and this is kind of its second year so you expect a few hiccups and problems but just something to be aware of yeah yeah the the one that i know most specifically is is the all-wheel drive system either it's center clutch or something about the all-wheel drive system does have a tendency to overheat on track and then that basically makes it front wheel drive at that point um, which again is not really the point but yeah you get to something like the Golf R or Type R that have been you know VW's been making Golf R for over 20 years Type R's existed for decades like those are a little bit more sussed out and refined at the limit um, and you can kind of tell that with age so Toyota will get there but yeah this first iteration is still pretty fun it's just that little teething issue yeah and then the second one that I have is really small and minor, but it's probably the first thing I noticed when I got in the car and just that it doesn't have a center console. <laughs> it's a base head, yeah. like just put it in. Just give us the center console so we don't have armrests then. And right. we don't have any storage in there. Yeah. And the storage thing I'm like okay with, but it would just be nice on some of the longer commutes to just put your elbow somewhere. Just, yeah. Just letting it hang like Just here. basic creature comforts that like every car has. Right. But yeah, I think at the end of the day, still a brilliantly fun car. So that brings the question then, what would you have? And for me, it's kind of the top three between this, 
Golf R, Civic Type R, the cars we've been talking about. I guess, you know, Hyundai and Twins are in there if you're into that sort of thing, but I don't even think they're making the Kona N anymore, so that would leave the Elantra. But what would you take? I think if it were a daily and we lived here, I really would like something with an all-wheel drive system uh, that has all the creature comforts that I need. So I would probably pick this, also because I just think this is going to be more reliable in the long run than a, than a Golf R. Um, and I think it just handles a little bit better. Um, so I would pick this. Yeah. What about you? Um, I think it's tough. I really, really like the Type R. I think that's probably the most complete, well-rounded. Um, but then between this and the Golf R, it's kind of a toss-up for me. Like, I really like the all-wheel drive system on the Golf R, but I like most everything else about this. Yeah. And I like the interior on the Golf R in terms of quality, but like everything else about this is better. So Just this look so and the paint. Tough. The look and the paint. I know, the paint. I love the paint. But anyway, what would you take? Leave it down in the comments. And thank you to Toyota for letting us have a go in your brilliantly fun GR Corolla. Yeah, or your a lot Corolla. Of fun. And we'll see you in the next time. See you guys later.